No, don't shoot me. Who's gonna direct? This is Edgar Wright, famous director of hit films like Hot Fuzz, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, Baby Driver, and most recently, Last Night in Soho. But we're not going to talk about any of his good films today. No, we're going back to a time before he ruined an entire generation of women. We're going back to his very first feature film, not Shaun of the Dead. We are going all the way back to the mid-90s to look at Wright's little-known comedy western, A Fistful of Fingers. She saw Ramona flowers and felt so empowered by a movie made in Hollywood. Edgar Wright grew up in a small town in Somerset, England. If you can imagine the town from Hot Fuzz, well, it's the same town in which he grew up. Needless to say, he wasn't some highly connected Hollywood elite. His daddy wasn't a film director, his uncle wasn't some big shot producer, and his family didn't run some secret blackmail sex ring. No, he was just a normal kid who loved the movies. Maybe a little too much. No, that's impossible. He started off with two cameras, a Super 8 and a VHS camera. With these tools, he built his filmmaking foundation by shooting loads of short films. His most notable short film of this early era is Dead Right, a well-set buddy cop comedy about a serial killer and his cult of serial fanatics terrorizing a town. In more ways than one, it's a proto-hot fuzz. Sure, it looks and feels like a student film, with amateurish acting, costume design, and the like, but it's definitely an Edgar Wright film. It's interesting to see his style take shape all the way back in 1992, when he was only 18 years old. His frenetic editing, pastiche of genre films, and style of humor are all there. Really, it's a pretty enjoyable student film, even if it still is a student film. You wouldn't kill a woman in cold blood, would you? You would, wouldn't you? Women. You can watch it for free on YouTube, so I'll leave a link to it in the description. Since Wright now had a rather long short film under his belt, the logical next step was to make a feature film, which he did. Equipped with just $15,000, I don't know how much that is in fake Monopoly money British currency, a 16mm camera, a group of willing friends, and his very western looking county of Somerset, England, Wright and his band of lost boys set out to make a parody of western films, drawing from the likes of Monty Python, Mel Brooks, and the Zucker Brothers. The plot of the film is similar to your typical spaghetti western. A bounty hunter who goes by the man with no name hunts down a notorious gunslinger known as the squint. It stops being a matter of business when the squint kills the man with no name's horse, Easy. It's, uh, it's implied that the man with no name is in a relationship with Easy. Also, the man with no name's real name is Walter Marshall, but he jokes that his actual name doesn't exactly inspire fear in the bad guys. Along the way, Walter picks up a couple companions who join him in his quest through Somerset, England. I mean the Wild West. His main companion is a Sioux Indian, I think. I mean, it's a British kid with face paint. But his character's name is Running Sore. Very cheeky, Edgar. The other companion just kind of does nothing, and I suppose that's the joke? Together, these three amigos track down the squint, defeat his band of banditos, find the treasure, save the girl, and save the day. It's not a movie you watch for the plot. Rather, the appeal of A Fistful of Fingers is its flurry of jokes, which include puns, and I mean a lot of puns, visual gags, and meta jokes. Just imagine it's a movie like Airplane. Do the jokes land, though? Not necessarily. You might find them funny, and I'm sure that they will land a bit better if you're watching this film with some friends over some beers. I, however, watch this film sober and alone, like how I watch every film. But humor is subjective, so I'll show you some examples of humor in the movie, and you can make up your own mind. Say, you seen this guy? How you know his name is Guy? I can guess. You seen him? I have seen this man. You have? Where? On this. Hey, that ain't fair. None shall pass. The jokes might be corny and silly, but I have to admit that I can feel the passion in this movie. It's obvious from this film that Wright loves movies and he loves making movies. It might be low quality and a bit cringe here or there, but it's undeniably a labor of love. For a $15,000 production, they did a great job obtaining Old West style outfits. Period costumes can often be quite expensive, so it's almost a miracle that Wright was able to have his entire cast in period dress. As for the 
the horses, you might have noticed that they use toy horses instead, and it kind of works. Weirdly, it doesn't feel like a byproduct of a tiny budget, but like an intentional joke that calls back to Monty Python's The Holy Grail. But Wright ran into quite the problem when editing the film. It wasn't long enough. The original runtime was 72 minutes, which was too short for a feature. He didn't have the money to shoot more scenes, so he extended the film as best he could by adding a slow rolling credit sequence at the end, a long animated credit sequence at the beginning, and a nighttime scene that was completely black. He recorded audio and just put it over a black screen. These three additions brought the film up to a respectable 78 minutes. Wondering what? About bounty hunters? What about them? Whether they get lonely out on the trail. Wright screened the film in various school auditoriums, often drawing large crowds to see his homegrown spoof movie. It eventually was broadcast on Sky Movies, which is where the stars of the highly respected and very classy show, Little Britain saw the film and in turn saw Wright's potential. They brought him under their wings and helped him get appearances on shows as well as work directing television episodes, transforming him into quite the prolific TV director. And let's not forget that this was all while he was in his early 20s. I find it funny that Wright can thank Tweedledee and Carol Beer for much of his early success, but all of this work through the 90s was leading him to somewhere important. Spaced, the acclaimed sitcom that united Edgar Wright with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. And it was with Spaced that Wright came into his own, commercially and artistically. I just think that it's inspiring how a line can be drawn from a goofy homemade movie like A Fistful of Fingers to a show like Spaced, and in turn, films like Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. It proves that the best thing you can do as a creative is to make something, and the worst thing that you can do is to not do anything. Or, you know, commit crimes, get addicted to drugs, things like that. But you know what I'm talking about. Now that we're coming to the end of the video, I'm sure at least a few of you are wondering how you can get your hands on Wright's first film. You can't. There hasn't been a proper release of the film on physical media and the only copy I was able to find was a low resolution version of it on YouTube. I know that since it was shot on 16mm, it's got to look a lot better than this. But this is all we've got right now. Why hasn't it been released? Well, I think a big reason is that Wright just doesn't like it that much. After he finished editing the film, he was quite disappointed with it, with one of his major complaints being that he felt that he didn't shoot enough coverage. I think his dissatisfaction with the film is the primary reason we haven't seen any kind of release of it, even if he has teased it in the past. I don't blame him. It's always a bit embarrassing having people watch your early work, but I think that director's early works can also serve as great inspiration to up-and-coming films. Filmmakers. Here's hoping that we get a 4K HDR liquid gate scan restoration with Dolby Digital 5.1 surround sound release of A Fistful of Fingers, complete with director's commentary, sometime in our lifetimes. Though I would understand if Wright would prefer to release it posthumously. You can't shoot the director, Quinn. It's not allowed. Isn't it? Oh, oh shit. Um, who's gonna direct now? Jonah, do you think it's important to be unattractive to be funny? 